All right. Hello and welcome in everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today from wherever you are. My name is Hong Win and I'm part of the careers and professional team. Um, specifically, I serve as the employer engagement manager here at WGU. We're very excited to have you join in today's session on budgeting and high inflation with Commerce Bank. It's always such a joy to have the Commerce Bank team here with us. Um, and their financial workshops always provide such great information. So with that, I'd like to pass things over to them and get today's session started. So Cassandra, the floor is all yours. Thank you. Um, my name is Cassandra Krop. I'm from Commerce Bank in the workplace team on the St. Louis side. Um, and today we'll be discussing steps that you can take to assess your budget when inflation is high. Inflation can affect various areas of a person's finances from the cost of groceries to interest paid on a specific debt. But because of this, it's important to understand how to analyze and rework your budget when costs rise. So inflation and the economy can be very stressful subjects. We're gonna start with a quick meditation to bring our focus to the shifting economy. And then I'm just accessing that through my milestones here. For today's meditation, we're going to explore the economy. The economy represents the wealth and resources of an entire nation. It can also represent a source of insecurity and fear among individuals. Many people worry about the uncertainty of the economy and what it might mean for their financial situation. Stress about an economic downturn can bring up fears about losing your job or affording your lifestyle. If you feel stressed about the economy, the goal is not to ignore those thoughts or push those feelings away. They'll only come back stronger. Instead, we're bringing awareness to them as they come up. Through this practice, you're building an ability to manage your finances in a more thoughtful and skillful way. So with that, come into a seated position and close your eyes or find a soft gaze. Feel your head and neck balanced on your shoulders and feel your shoulders relaxed down your back. Place your hands in a comfortable position. Maybe they're on your knees. Soften your face and jaw. Today, right now, you're setting aside a few minutes to check in with yourself as you develop a more mindful approach to your finances. Start by noticing the sensations in your body. Feel your weight in contact with the cushion or chair and take a moment to adjust your posture so you're sitting tall, stable, and grounded. Do a gentle scan through your body from the very top of your head all the way down to your feet. Notice where you feel relaxed and where there is tension or tightness. When you're ready, begin to pay attention to the flow of your breath. Take a deep inhale through your nose and fill yourself up. Follow it by a long, easy exhale through your mouth. Release. Continue to feel the flow of your inhales and exhales as you let yourself settle into a natural breathing pattern. Feel your lungs expanding on the inhale through your nose and your muscles relaxing on the exhale through your mouth. When your mind starts to wander, that's okay. In fact, it's expected. Notice where it goes. Don't judge it or try to stop it. Rather, observe 
and label it. If you're thinking, say thinking. And if you're feeling, say feeling. Simply state the word that labels the action, then choose to come back to the rise and fall of your breath. As you breathe, keep in mind that you're not trying to fix anything. You're on a journey of familiarizing yourself with the nature and ways of your mind and body. Breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. And labeling when you wander off, thinking, feeling. Gently let go of your attention to your breath and allow your mind to wander wherever it wants to go for the next few moments. When you're ready, take a deep inhale through your nose, filling up your lungs. Then exhale through your mouth, letting it go. Come back into your body feeling your weight against the surface you're sitting on, your feet on the floor, and your hands settled in a resting position. Wiggle your fingers and then your toes as you notice the sounds and smells that surround you. Slowly open your eyes. Let's take a moment to acknowledge how you feel. Sometimes your mind will be busier, and other times it will be quieter. What's important is that you're noticing. As we finish today's meditation, let's bring our thoughts back to the economy. The economy can represent a major source of uncertainty and financial stress in our lives. History tells us that the economy will continue to go up and down over time, and it can be hard to reconcile the aspects of our financial future that are outside of our control. As an exercise, write down what the economy means to you. Then consider what would happen to your finances during an economic downturn. What would your ideal scenario be for yourself if the economy collapsed? What steps could you take to get closer to this ideal scenario? Be open to whatever comes up and write it all down. This exercise can help you acknowledge the small steps you can take to secure your footing within a shifting economy. Okay, thank you all for that. So this is our agenda for today. We are going to talk about what is My Milestones by Commerce, which if you're not familiar with that yet, it is the tool we're going to use for today's session. Why financial wellness is important. What is inflation? steps you can take to assess your budget, and then we have a call to action and some Q&A at the end. So the reason we are here today is because WGU has partnered with us to bring in My Milestones as a free benefit for all of you. And My Milestones is a financial wellness platform that provides objective, interactive tools, education, and solutions to empower users to take control of their finances. All of us are in a different financial situation, and with My Milestones, you can gain education on topics that are relevant to you. My Milestones offers a variety of different learning mediums, such as courses, interactive tools, articles, start here guides, meditations, videos, however you like to learn. Also, any personal information that you put in My Milestones will not be shared with WGU. <laughs> So, like we said, with My Milestones, you'll be able to take control of your personal finances. And this is important because most of the time when we think of our benefits, we think of our health, wellness, and our mental wellness, but financial wellness has a huge impact on us as well. 
So we've learned that 64% of people live paycheck to paycheck. And we're going to talk about that today um, as we learn about inflation and assess our budget. And with my milestones, it can help you kind of change your perception of your finances. So we're going to start off with a poll question. So type your answer in the chat here. When comparing this year's expenses to last year's, how much did you spend? Is it significantly more than last year? B, a little more than last year? C, about the same as last year? D, a little less than last year? Or E, significantly less than last year? I see a D, a little less, a little less, significantly less, about the same significantly more. Okay, so we are all over the place. <laughs> um, and that's, there's a lot that can factor into that as well beyond the economy, any life changes and things like that as well. So what is inflation? Put simply, inflation is the average change in prices over a period of time. It's measured using the Consumer Price Index, or the CPI, um, which tracks the prices of a common, goods, a common basket of goods and services, such as food and transportation. The CPI publishes a new rate every month, which shows the 12-month change from the same month in the prior year. So what steps can we take when the cost of goods rise? A best practice would be to look at your budget and review categories that you do have some control over. Ask yourself whether or not they're really necessary, could you live without them, or are there cheaper alternatives that you could opt for instead? It's important to identify any spending changes, especially with the changing economy. This may involve gathering bank statements and knowing how your spending has changed over the past year. This can help you determine what adjustments that you need to make your um, make to your budget. So for example, you may notice that your grocery spending is higher this year than it was last year. We're gonna watch this quick video on analyzing your budget. Once you've created a budget, it's time to start analyzing your spending and looking for ways to save money. For this, you're going to have to zero in on all the expenses over which you do have some control, your variable and periodic expenses. Take the time to review all the things that fall under these spending categories and ask yourself whether or not they're really necessary. Could you live without them? Or are there cheaper alternatives you could opt for instead? Sometimes you can save hundreds, if not thousands of dollars each year just by shopping around for better prices. Another important rule to live by is to spend less than you take home. Assuming you do this already, be smart about whatever leftover income you have at the end of each week or month. One idea for the surplus funds would be to transfer some into the savings account, or alternatively, you could consider investing it. Whatever you do, avoid spending your excess income just for the sake of it. Another strategy for saving money includes limiting your use of credit cards with resulting fees and interest charges. Instead, you can use the surplus in your budget to save up for the expensive items you really want, as opposed to purchasing them on credit. Lastly, take the time to think seriously about what motivates your spending. Do you tend to splurge more on items during times of stress? Are you driven to buy products that you see advertised on social media or being promoted by celebrities? Just like looking for ways to spend less than living within your means, developing an awareness for the psychological factors that make you spend will enable you to better manage your money on an ongoing basis and work towards your financial goals. Okay, so now that we've learned a little bit about analyzing our budget, we're gonna take a look at a sample budget and review ways that we might make some changes. Um, to access that tool that we're going to be use, using for today's session and for the call to action items, you are going to scan the QR code on your phone or you can go to wgu.mymilestones.com. Jamie's also dropping those items in the chat as well. And I will give you all just a moment to either sign up if you've not visited before or sign in.
And while you all finish getting signed in, So I went ahead and made a demo profile for today's session. Yours may look different. Um, if you're signing in for the first time, it will prompt you to do the financial wellness checkup, which is a quick um, five, five or so minute quiz that helps my milestones understand what area of finances are important to you. Um, and I will do a really quick run through of the dashboard Board, just in case this is your first time using it, um, but you'll see a welcome message, a money personality quiz, which we'll talk about at the end as well, um, your get recommendations option for the financial wellness checkup. And then on the left-hand side, this is where you can see recommendations. Um, if you want to enter the sweepstakes, you get points just for interacting with the platform and learning. You can enter those every single month to win out of a thousand dollar prize pool. You can save any favorites you have here. And there's a Commerce Bank Solutions option. Again, you do not have to bank with Commerce to use my milestones. Um, but if you would like to speak with a banker, um, you can access us here. And if we have any offers, like currently we have a $300 checking account offer for WGU students, that information will be here as well. But we're, today we are going to use the budgeting tool together. To access that, you can either click on the search icon and type in budgeting, or you can go to topics and then tools. And then the budgeting tool will be right here. Um, I have created a sample budget for you all today so that we can break down expenses, but you will want to use your own income and expenses when you fill this out. Um, so if you'd like to fill it out as we go along, if you know your numbers, please feel free to do that. Oh, one second, let me log back in. My apologies, um, but if you would like to fill out your budget as we go along, you can absolutely do that. Or if you just want to follow along with my example numbers and then fill yours out um, after the fact, you can as well. OK, so uh, this is what the budgeting tool looks like. You're going to start by entering your income and then if you have anybody else's income that you want to include as well any monthly savings goals. So I went ahead and put an emergency fund goal in here. Um, these are really cool. You can edit them. Um, you can have a target amount, what your current balance is, and when you'd like to have that amount built by, and it will tell you how much you need to save per month, as well as a progress tracker there. But you can also do it for new car, next vacation, or you can add your own goal as well. If you regularly put aside any retirement or invest funds there, uh, monthly expenses. So you're going to start with your mortgage or your rent. Um, if you have any insurance or property taxes, I know a lot of times um, like homeowner rental insurance are included in your mortgage or rent payment. So you can always remove these items if you don't want to look at them. Um, it's just up to your preference. Then you're going to look at utilities. That's going to be your monthly bill, um, like for water, gas, electricity, um, garbage, things like that. TV, internet, and phone. Um, this is a great spot to stop and review all of your subscriptions. Um, things like your Netflix, your Hulu, your Disney Plus, um, Discovery Plus, whatever you have, you'll want to include that there. Um, also, while we're doing this, it's a great time to review all subscriptions in general, things like your Amazon Prime, um, if you have any food delivery subscriptions, and make sure that you are still actively using them and you're not being charged for something that you don't use anymore. And then you're going to put your um, monthly bill for groceries, so food and drink. Um, this one can be kind of harder to estimate, so you may want to take a look at your previous month's bank statements and see how much you've been spending. The next session is going to be personal and family. So if you have any child care um, or pet care, education expenses, you'll want to put them in there. Car and transportation. So these are going to be your car payments, um, how much you spend on gas, health and wellness. So fitness and beauty, your gym memberships, your yoga memberships, um, getting your nails done, getting your hair done, um, any toiletries. So your shampoo and toothpaste and things like that for the month. 
And the fun category, this is definitely one of the more variable ones, but you're going to use your dining and going out, clothes, shopping, and then any debt. So if you have regular credit card payments or student loan payments that you're making currently, you'll want to add those. And then insurance as well. So once you have filled all of that out, if you'll go back to the top, you'll get a monthly net. So my budget status, according to this example, is positive, and I have a monthly net of $8. So that means um, if everything goes according to plan, I have an extra $8 every month. So that is cutting it really close, and that I would definitely qualify as living from paycheck to paycheck. So learning what we have learned, what are some variable expenses that we might be able to cut? Go ahead and type any suggestions that you have in the chat. So what on here can we take a look at and maybe cut down or get rid of? Entertainment, mm -hmm. subscriptions. So let's go through each box here and see where we might be able to cut down. So first let's look at our emergency fund. Um, we might not want to cut down on this one, but maybe um, I can push my target date back a little bit and um, not put aside as much every month. Um, mortgage and rent, those are kind of set in stone. Um, utilities are kind of set in stone. TV and internet, that one, maybe we can go through and get rid of a subscription or two. Um, groceries, that one is a big variable um, expense. So maybe we can look into getting some off brand for certain items or making sure we're actually consuming everything that we do purchase and we're not being wasteful. Um, personal and family for the most part is kind of set in stone. Um, car transportation, you can watch things like your fuel, um, but those are kind of set in stone as well. Health and wellness, we can definitely take a look at this fitness and beauty category. Um, maybe we can cut down on how many times we get our nails done a month, or maybe I'm not really using that yoga membership, or I can find a cheaper gym membership um, near me through like a rec center or something like that. Toiletries is going to be the same thing as groceries. Maybe I can find some cheaper branded items. Um, and then this fun category, this is definitely where we can make some cuts. So dining and going out is usually the first thing that we're going to look at. Oh, not a thousand. I just made that really expensive. Um, the first thing that we look at and think about when we um, cut our budget, how much are we spending on ordering food and going out to eat? Um, clothes, maybe we don't need clothes as often, or maybe we can visit a thrift shop um, or do a swap meet with friends instead. Um, our shopping budget, that's another one to maybe cut down in. Maybe I'm not buying as many things um, that I don't really need. You'll want to keep your credit card payments where they're at if you can, um, and then your insurance. So we've made all of these cuts, right? Um, and that's really easy on paper. I understand it's not that easy in real life. Uh, but taking a look, I went from having an extra $8 a month from now having an extra $440 a month. So this is not going to happen all at once magically. This is going to happen over time. So I recommend filling out your budget, really tracking where you're at and being mindful, and then seeing where you can make cuts. My challenge would be to do this at least until the end of the year and see where you're at and see where you can save. Um, one thing that you'll want to do as you're going through your own personal budget is reorganizing your expenses. So you can organize your expenses in terms of importance. So maybe name brand hair products are more important than name brand food products for me. So you will identify areas that you can cut back in or remove altogether. Um, it's also important to bargain shop and compare deals. I spent 168 last month, much shame. Um, and Bobby, we do not shame here because we'd probably be shaming me quite a bit. So <laughs> Target sees me coming. So, um, that's why I mentioned, look, I just made $430, but that's on paper and it's not really that simple. Um, so just bringing awareness and tracking what you're doing is really impactful. I know my husband and I just looked at 
you know, we know how we know we spend too much money going out to eat, but we really looked at how much we were spending on like, oh, I stop at the gas station and get a Red Bull here and there. And that added up way more than we expected. Um, so that is a huge one for me. And it's really important to look at all of those little things. So in our perfect world on paper here, now we have an extra four hundred and forty dollars a month. So what do we do with all that extra money? Do we go back to spending it how we were, or is there a better option? So after you make your cuts, you wanna make a plan for your extra income. Put any extra money that you have towards building that emergency fund um, and maintain a habit of savings if you're able to. Also, you'll wanna take a look at your variable rate debts. So if you have credit cards, or lines of credit, putting any extra money towards those um, will help you pay them off faster and save you money on interest. This is also very important to remember um, if you ever get a bonus or a tax refund. Um, you'll wanna take that money and if you're able to put that towards your, your savings gold or any debts that you have. When you fill out this budgeting tool as well, it will also give you an idea of what you can do. So in this example, um, it says that some financially healthy things that I can do with my extra cash include contributing more to investments, pay down debt, build an emergency fund, or save for a goal. So awareness is the first step to change. Absolutely. And speaking of awareness, um, understanding the reasons for spending money are very important. I'm going to show you one more tool that will be in your call to action today, and it's in this mindfulness tab. Um, or you can search money personality. So your money personality is a quick assessment to get you an analysis of your money personality. So you're gonna discover your personality type. Um, you'll get recommendations and you can compare that with others. So you'll get an emotions, outlook, focus, and influence. Um, and you'll be in a category based off all of these things and it will give you pros and cons of each one. So that can really help bring awareness to maybe why do you make the decisions that you do? Because we're all different, right? So being mindful of your of what influences you're spending can help you stay within your budget and better manage any triggers. Um, for example, I have fallen victim to TikTok shop many a times. So <laughs> I'm very easily influenced. Yeah, I do buy too many pickles at the gas station. That's also true. Thank you, Ashley, for calling me out directly like that. <laughs> I love those little pickles. Um, but bringing awareness to, oh, I don't need every single thing that I swipe by um, and really look at it. Is this a good product? Is this something I actually want or need? Um, one more article I will show you all, and we will drop the link to this as well. But this can be a really helpful article if you're having trouble deciding what do I want versus what do I need? Hang on. Pickles and picker. Oh, pickle flavor things. I see. No, no, no. You guys are making me spend more money. I'm done reading over there. Uh, <laughs> Jamie, can you drop the link for the um, wants versus needs? budgeting um, article that we had. And then I will bring that up. Thank you. Oh, 50, 30, 20. Sorry. I was is that, typing is that the one you wanted? I'm sorry. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, this is another really good article and Jamie just dropped it in the chat, the 50, 30, 20 budgeting rule. So if you're having trouble deciding do I need it or do I want it? This is a great article to look at, um, goes over your needs, wants, and your savings categories and what might be categorized in there as well. Okay, and then I think we got a tip in the chat. I do this thing where I will add to my cart, but wait 24 hours before I purchase and usually won't have the urge to buy the next day. That is another great helpful tip when you're shopping. Am I still thinking about it? Do I still really want it as much as I do in the moment? Thank you, that is a great tip. Okay, I'm gonna bring us back and here's that QR code to access those tools um, one more time if you need. So here is our call to action for today. So 
Take action and review your variable and periodic expenses and fill out this budgeting tool. Um, and then you'll want to have a closer look at what motivates your spending by taking that money personality assessment. Um, also, I don't know if you all have someone else in your life that you make financial decisions with, but having both of you take that money personality assessment can be very eye opening and helpful as well. Um, and this PDF will be sent out to you too, and these are both clickable links directly to them. Um, so I will leave some time for questions. Um, Jamie is also going to drop some more helpful articles in the chat. Definitely one about comparison shopping um, and tips to save money, which is great with the holiday time coming up as well. I know a lot of us are purchasing gifts um, and it can feel kind of overwhelming. Um, she's also going to drop a quick five question survey on today's session. We do really read them and apply any feedback that you have. So I will leave it just a moment for some questions and then if not i will pass it back to you thank you cassandra if anyone has questions please feel free to use the chat feature um, or if you like to come off mute you can simply raise your hand as well um, and while folks are thinking of questions, I did have one that popped to mind. Uh, so the tool is really great, like you said, to kind of look on paper how to save and where you're at. Uh, do you have any tips kind of following that on how to track it? Do you kind of note it on your phone or um, have any ways to kind of track that as you're using it? Yeah, absolutely. So you really just kind of need to figure out what works for you personally. I'll give my personal example. I take a look at this at the beginning of the month, every month uh, with my household and see kind of where we're at, how much did we actually spend because it, it's not gonna be the same every single month. Um, so however you like to remember things, if it's um, writing yourself down a note on your desk, say, hey, check this. Um, if it's, you know, setting an, uh, an alert in your phone, um, however you like to remind yourself to do things. Uh, if you have someone that you're comfortable sharing information with, having an accountability partner is great. As you can see, Ashley calls me out about my pickle spending, which is good. <laughs> but um, sharing with a friend is awesome. All of anything you put into my milestones too, it will save. So you can log out and then just log back in and make adjustments as needed. Awesome. Thank you for that, Cassandra. Any questions? Feel free to drop them in the chat. We'll just give it a couple more minutes here. And if you do have questions that maybe you think of tomorrow or later on, uh, please feel free to email those um, through to us and we'll make sure our commerce team here gets them as well. I see some typing, so we'll just give it a minute. Um, if you're going through your budgeting tool as well or anything else on my milestones and you do have specific questions, um, please feel free to call or email me as well. And if I don't know the answer, I will find you someone that does. All right, I'm not seeing anything coming through. Um, so if you do have questions later on, please feel free to send those over and we'll make sure Cassandra and the Commerce Bank team receives them. But we'll go ahead and uh, conclude our session for today. Just as a quick reminder, we will be sending out the recording along with the survey. We really appreciate it if you could take a minute or so to complete that. Um, also, of course, we'd like to e extend a sincere WGU thank you to our fantastic presenter Cassandra and the wonderful team from Commerce Bank, Jamie um, facilitating the chat and Ashley as well also in there. Uh, so thank you so much for your time and expert knowledge on budgeting in high inflation. That was great information and I know I'll take that back here and hopefully with the holidays coming up, be able to budget for all of that. Um, but thank you so much. Wishing everyone a fantastic rest of your day um, and keep an eye out for future sessions with Commerce Bank as well. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay.